Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Abdul Rahman. I'm here learning ECG. In the previous video, we discussed, we were discussing about PR intervals, and we discussed in detail about the condition which can cause in increase in PR interval, and uh, which were AV nodal blocks. And uh, in this video, we will discuss about the condition which will decrease our PR interval, and those condition, as I explained earlier, are called pre-excitation syndromes or pre-excitation. Rhythm. So and they will be WBW syndrome. Let's go to our whiteboard. Uh, we know that uh, this is our heart. This is our SA node. This is our AV node. Impulse starts from SA node, reaches AV node after depolarization of the atria, and we generate a P wave. And then usually there is some delay in the AV node, and after the delay, septum and ventricle will be depolarized. The delay will be represented as a PR interval. In the ECG, then if it will be followed by ventricular depolarization and the ventricular depolarization later on. So, in the previous video, we discussed all the condition in which our PR interval is prolonged, or the condition in which the delay in the AV node was increased than normal. They were called AV node blocks. Now, in this one, we will discuss any condition in which. We can bypass this delay, or this delay will be decreased. So, how can we we decrease this delay if there is some extra pathway which is present either on the right or on the left side? And in what the impulse will go do? It will start from SA node, and instead of going through AV node, it will pass through either one of these pathways, either from the left side or from the right side. But in a nutshell. It will bypass the delay in the AV node. When it will bypass the delay in the AV node, it will excite our ventricle or it will depolarize our ventricle earlier than it was expected. So our normal ECG was expected to be like this, okay? And what happened in in this AV in this pre-excitation syndrome when we have some accessory pathways from which impulse can go. Earlier to the ventricle and impulse can cause ventricular depolarization earlier than expected. Then what happens? That the usually the expected ventricular depolarization was at this point, but because the impulse reached earlier, so there will be an early upslurring in the in the in the PR interval, and this early upslurring or upslope is called delta wave. So when the delta wave will be formed in any P in any ECG, what will happen? Our previous our PR interval was this, but now after the formation of delta wave, PR interval will be shortened. So we will be have a short PR interval. Moreover, our previous QRS complex was this, but due to the formation of delta wave, our QRS complex will be broadened. So we will be have in. Increased duration of QRS complex or broad QRS complex, and plus we will and this this is because the delta wave will be formed. So what is the striking three features of WPW syndrome or any pre-excitation syndrome that they will be decreased PR interval, decreased mean less than one twenty milliseconds. They will be increased QRS complex duration. It means more than one twenty milliseconds or more than three small squares. And there will be formation of delta wave. If we have these three features in our ECG, we will call that there is a pre-excitation syndrome. There are multiple types of pre-excitation syndrome, but the most common and famous one is the WPW syndrome, Wolff-Parkinson-White syndrome. Okay, so this is the basic electrophysiology behind the WPW syndrome. There is an extra pathway, and that pathway bypasses our Normal AV nodal conduction, and due to this bypass, there is an early upslurring, which will cause short PR and prolonged QRS complex and a delta wave, and this is called WPW syndrome. Usually, WPW syndrome they are not significant if unless they are not causing some supraventricular arrhythmias, which we will discuss in the next. A lecture, but uh, if as as far as they are not causing any arrhythmia, they are not very 
uh, much significant. So there are two types of WPW syndrome which I will discuss in this video. WPW syndrome can be of type A and can be of type B. As I told that, that pre-excitation pathway can be on the either side of the heart. If that pre-excitation pathway is on the left side, it will be called as type A WPW syndrome. It is, if it is on the right side, it is, we will call it as type B of WPW syndrome. And uh, how we will see them in ECG. So type A WPW syndrome, anatomically it will be on the left side type b wpw syndrome anatomically they will be on the right side and on the ecg type a wpw syndrome we will be having a positive v1 okay along with a right ventricular hypertrophy like pattern it is not a real right ventricular hypertrophy but the pattern will look like right ventricular hypertrophy and there might be right axis deviation as well might be not 100 percent similarly in type of in, in case of type b wpw syndrome anatomically the pathway will be on the right side right side of the av node and that pathway will and the ecg will be there will be a negative qrs complex in v1 that is usually normal and there will be a left ventricular hypertrophy like pattern not real LVH but the pattern of ECG will look like that and there might be in some cases left axis deviation. So these will be the ECG findings of type A WPW syndrome or type B WPW syndrome. We will just have a look on the V1 if there is short PR prolonged QRS complex delta wave with positive V1, it is type A. If short PR, prolonged QRS complex, delta wave with negative V1, it will be type B. Simple is that. Okay. So now uh, just let me tell you that why exactly these ECG changes happen. Okay. So that you, will, you, you may not forget it any, any in the future. So there might be two pathways, either on the right side or on the left side. And we know that our ECG leads, our chest leads are located over here, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. Our chest leads are located over here. Okay. What was happening normally? Normally, our impulse was passing through AV node and it was depolarizing both of the ventricle. So our impulse, mostly it is going away from, this is V1. So most of the, so mostly our impulse is going away from V1. That is why in a, in any normal ECG, most of the time we see a negative V1, right? This is the normal thing. What will happen in case of type A WPW syndrome, our impulse, instead of going from here, our impulse will take a path from this, this faster pathway. It will depolarize left ventricle earlier than right ventricle and then it will depolarize the right ventricle. So because left ventricle will be depolarized earlier and then the action potential will go to the right ventricle. So there will be two things. First due to the direction of impulse towards this mean towards V1 we will be having a positive V1. Second because of direction of our depolarization is changed. So there might be change in the cardiac axis as well. So there might be right axis deviation. Our normal axis were located over here, but due to this condition, our axis might be deviated to right side causing right axis deviation. So this is why this type of ECG changes happen. So in, in the, in the other form, so if, if our, accessory pathway is located on the left side sorry right side so what will happen our impulse will start from SA node it will depolarize right ventricle earlier than left ventricle and it will go like this so our v1 was located over here so what will happen v1 it is still going away from v1 right it is not going towards to v1 so v1 will still be negative as it was before but this time this is this is our normal cardiac axis 
सो बिकॉज इम आवर एक्शन पोटेंशियल इज गोइंग टूवर्ड्स लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल इंस्टेड ऑफ गोइंग हेयर इट इज गोइंग लाइक दिस सो इट कैन इट कैन ड्रैग आवर कार्डियक एक्सिस टूवर्ड्स लेफ्ट साइड सो देर माइट बी लेफ्ट एक्सिस डेविएशन एंड देर माइट बी अ पिक्चर ऑफ लेफ्ट वेंटिकुलर हाइपर ट्रॉफी बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द एक्शन पोटेंशियल एंड कंडक्शन इज गोइंग टूवर्ड द लेफ्ट साइड सो दैट इज वाई वी कैन हैव लेफ्ट एक्सिस डेविएशन विद अ नेगेटिव वी वन इन डब्ल्यू पी डब्ल्यू सिंड्रोम इन इन बी टाइप ऑफ डब्ल्यू पी डब्ल्यू सिंड्रोम टाइप बी सो डब्ल्यू पी डब्ल्यू सिंड्रोम थ्री थिंग्स शॉर्ट पी आर प्रोलॉन्ग क्यूरस कॉम्प्लेक्स डेल्टा वेव इफ इट इज अकम्पनीड बाय द पॉजिटिव वी वन इट इज टाइप ए बिकॉज द पाथवे ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड इफ इट इज विद द नेगेटिव वी वन इट इज टाइप पी बिकॉज द पाथवे ऑन द राइट साइड नाउ लेट्स हैव अ लुक ऑन सम एग्जाम्पल्स सो दिस इज एन ई सी जी यू कैन हैव अ लुक फर्स्ट देर इज अ डेल्टा वेव यू कैन सी एन अर्ली अपलरिंग इन द ए सी जी राइट पी आर इंटरवल इज शॉर्ट एन देर इज नो एवी नोडल डिले एट ऑल राइट एंड क्यू आर एस इज प्रोलॉन्ग सो शॉर्ट क्यू आर शॉर्ट पी आर प्रोलॉन्ग क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स डेल्टा वेव डब्ल्यू बी डब्ल्यू विच टाइप लुक एट वी वन वी वन इज पॉजिटिव इट मीन्स दैट द इम्पल्स इज गोइंग फ्रॉम लेफ्ट टू राइट सो द पाथवे इज ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड सो इट इज टाइप ए मोर ओवर लुक एट द एक्सिस लुकिंग टूवर्ड्स ईच अदर वी वन ए ए लीड वन इज नेगेटिव लीड थ्री इज पॉजिटिव ए वी एल इज नेगेटिव वी एफ इज पॉजिटिव सो दिस इज राइट एक्सिस डेविएशन सो इट इज so it is uh, right axis deviation so this one will be type a in type a there will be right axis deviation there will be right ventricular hypertrophy led picture and the pathway will be on the left side okay so let's see another example this is the opposite we can see some upslurring over here this is delta wave and we can see pr interval is very short and qrs is prolonged so this is wpw syndrome which type of wpw syndrome look at v1 v1 is negative this is type b wpw syndrome okay and moreover we can see the axis axis is look at lead 1 and lead 3 leaving each other so there is left axis deviation this is type b wpw syndrome